Today, we are going to make the world's fastest home automation system using the STM32 F103 C8 D6 controller board, HC05 or HC06 Bluetooth module, a solid state 4 channels relay module, and an Android cell phone application designed in Android Studio. Now, you might be wondering why not just use Arduino for this job? Well, buckle up as we unravel the reasons why STM32 steals the spotlight in this home automation extravaganza. Arduino has long been a favorite for DIY projects but STM32 is preferred over the Arduino for more complex projects due to its advanced ARM Cortex-M architecture offering higher processing power, larger memory and a wide range of peripherals. It excels in multitasking real-time capabilities and provides a more robust development environment making it ideal for applications that demand performance and scalability beyond the capabilities of Arduino. During initial Initial experiments I used mechanical relays that we commonly use. Even now I can control loads at a considerable speed and I believe this switching speed is sufficient. However, my goal is to create the world's fastest home automation system and achieving this is not possible by using mechanical relays. Mechanical relays are slow due to the physical movement involved in their operation. The mechanical parts such as contacts have inertia leading to delays in switching. Contact bounds where contacts make and break several times before stabilizing contributes to the overall response time. The energizing and de-energizing of the relay coil also take time influenced by both electrical and mechanical factors and because there are moving parts in it, the lifespan of mechanical relays is also reduced due to wear and tear. Anyway, I replaced the mechanical relays with the solid state relays and then I was like wow. In contrast, solid state relays use electronic components for switching, eliminating mechanical parts and offering fast response times making them more suitable for applications requiring rapid and precise switching. This home automation system is not only faster but also quite user friendly. As you can see I have some loads currently switched on for now. Let's imagine these loads are installed in another room. After a couple of hours I want to switch one of these loads on or off but I have forgotten which one I turned on or turned off. To eliminate this kind of confusion I have integrated of feedback features into this home automation system as soon as I open the application on my cell phone STM32 through Bluetooth provides me with feedback on which load is currently on and which one is off. This ensures seamless control and eliminates any confusion. What are your thoughts on this feedback idea? Drop a comment and let me know. You can program the STM32 controller board using the Arduino IDE. I have explained it in several videos and you can also program the STM32 32 controller board using the STM32 Cube IDE and I have explained it in my 45 minutes long video. I will add links to all the related videos in the description. Anyway, using STM32 Cube IDE or Arduino IDE for programming the STM32 controller board offers several advantages. STM32 Cube IDE is tailored specifically for STM32 microcontrollers providing advanced debugging features, a graphical interface for peripheral configuration and seamless integration with STM32 Cube MX. Its support for complex projects, real-time capabilities and optimized code generation make it superior for leveraging the full potential of STM32 architecture. In contrast, Arduino IDE designed for simplicity may lack the sophisticated tools required for complex STM32 applications. STM32 Cube IDE streamlines development with a comprehensive ecosystem, making it the preferred choice for developers aiming for efficiency, precision and optimal performance in STM32 based projects. I have already created a 45 minutes video on the STM32 and Cube IDE where I explained the technical specifications of the STM32 board. I explained its pin configurations, demonstrated how to upload a program to the STM32 board using ST-Link V2 and I have also explained how to set up your STM32 Cube IDE. I have covered every detail comprehensively. Therefore, I highly
highly recommend that you watch that video because I won't be explaining those things again right now. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. Connect your STM32 board to the laptop via ST Link V2. You can follow this connections diagram. When the STM32 Cube IDE is open to start a new project, go to the file menu, then to new and click on the STM32 project. STM32 Cube IDE may take a moment to load and download the necessary libraries. Please be patient during this process as it may take some time depending on the speed. On the target selection window and while the MCU selector tape is active, select the commercial part number that is STM32F103C8T6. Select it from the MCU's list and then click on the next button. Write the project name. Select the targeted language, targeted binary type and targeted project type. On the pinout and configuration tape, click on the system core and select sys. Click on the debug and select serial wire. Next, click on the USARD2 and on the mode drop down menu, select asynchronous. Next, we are going to set the GPIO pins PB9, PB8, PB7, and PB6 as the outputs. We are using these pins to control a 4 channels relay module. Finally, click on the save button, and if it asks you do you want to generate code, click yes. Again, press the yes button. STM32 Cube IDE will generate the necessary code based on your pin configuration and open the associated perspective. This perspective provides you with the appropriate tools and views for further development and customization of your project. This is the generated code and now we will need to modify it in order to control the loads and send the feedback message to the Android cell phone application. I have already done it. You will need to download this code from our website electronicclinic.com and paste it over here. Finally, click on the save button and then click on the hammer icon or build. There are no errors and warnings. Now we can click on the play button. Click on the debugger tab. Select ST link. Click on show generator options. Set the reset mode to software system reset and click the apply button and then click the OK button. Finally, click the run button and that's it. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.